Hi, my name is Hajime Sugiyama from Mitsubishi Electric and I'm an industrial IoT evangelist. Today, I'd like to talk about an e-factory case study. It's about Harimaka Chemicals and it's starting your smart factory IoT journey with automated data collection. I hope you enjoy. First, let me give you a brief introduction about Harimaka Chemicals. Harimaka Chemicals was established in 1947 and they're what you call a pine chemical company. They make resins and towel oil products, paper chemicals and electronics materials. And these are used in printing ink, coating for painting, uh, synthetic rubber, resins for adhesives and paper strengthening agents and so on. They have a very high market share in the, mark in the industry that they are in. But they're also facing a tough environment because, as you know, everybody is kind of leaning away from using paper and they don't think that the market will come back. So what they're really trying to do is finding new industries where they can use their technology. And they also felt the need to invest in making their current factories even more efficient. So that was the starting of point of why they decided to install a smart factory. Regarding installation of their smart factory. Harima Chemical's issue was that the company had many locations and the data was basically managed in paper. There's a good reason that Harima Chemicals has high market share is what, because they are located close to the customer. They have a lot of paper customers. And so they establish their factories and sites close to the customer so they could respond to their requests. And also if they wanted to do testing, they could quickly respond and do the testing that was required. And that's why they have 29 sites located globally. Of course, this is their strengths, but on the other side, these 29 different sites make it difficult to accumulate the data. And as I said, as most of the data was handled, it's even more difficult to collect and assemble the data. So their basic policy was, okay, let's first optimize each factory operations and be able to collect the data automatically. And after we've done that, then let's look at the next step, which is cooperating and using this data between the 20, 29 sites that they had. Their final goal was to aim to optimize all of their factories, but they understood also that it was not easy to accomplish all of this in a very short period. So they did what you call a dream big, style smart, start small approach which is first collecting the factory information, collecting the data, then visualizing the data, and then first utilizing this data to predict factory failures, basically predictive maintenance. And after they will be able to do that on a factory base, the next step was to combine and utilize that information between factories. As I said, their previous method for collecting data was that workers were going around the factory and then recording the data from the measurement devices on paper. Of course, it's a chemical company, so the production process was quite automated. But on the other hand, as I said, the data was visually checked by the workers and recorded on paper. There's an issue with this because it took time to implement improvements after collecting data, meaning that there's always a time lag when the actual data was posted and after you can actually see there's a problem because you can only see it after you've collected the data. Selected two plants to do this. It was the Sendai plant and the Kabugawa plant. There was a good reason that they selected these two plants. It was because they had the will and they were willing to put the effort in to put in a smart factory. 
They explain the smart factory concept to all of their uh, sites. But the Sendai plant and the Kagawa plant said, yes, we want to do it. And I think this is very important because usually IoT projects are very challenging. So you want people that are motivated to do it in order to make it work. The Sendai plant produces paper strengthening agents used for cardboards and sizing agents, which control the water absorbency of paper. They're a small team. They have five people in production, two in sales, two in R&D, one in admin, and 12 people. But one of the things that they were daily thinking was that we have a lot of data that is lying around the factory floor, and there should be a lot of treasure in that data. I mean, room for improvement uh, and hints to even you know lower costs. But as they didn't have any IoT system now, they were saying it was just laying around, so we want to do something about this. So they decided to, okay, let's take the first step of installing a smart factory. They looked at various solutions outside uh, the world, and they said, okay, we want to go with Mitsubishi Electric. And actually, they even made a visit to the e-factory model factory that we have in Japan. One of the reasons that Harima Chemicals decided to go with Mitsubishi Electric was not only because of the products and solutions that we have, was because of the knowledge that Mitsubishi Electric had on the factory floor. Because this was the first time for them to do it and they were basically starting from scratch. So they thought that support was going to be a key factor. The actual support was provided from my eFactory Alliance partner, Mitsubishi Electric System Service. One of the first tasks that they had was collecting the data from the machinery. So what they did was they, from the equipment in the shop floor, they collected data with a PLC and then visualized it with GOT. After you start these projects, you find a lot of things. The first things that they were doing was they were trying to do visualization of the energy data on the factory floor. After they installed the visualization of the energy saving, they were able to quickly notice, okay, where are we using a waste or where are we using too much energy and respond to that. And also it was very helpful because they were able to early detect equipment irregularities because of course, when a machine is going down or going bad, that means it's used, it usually consumes more energy. They also were fortunate to have a lot of new findings through this visualization. For instance, they have two cooling fan motors, one with an inverter and one without an uh, inverter. And originally, they put in the inverter because they thought they were going to be able to save energy uh, by using the inverter. But well, the interesting thing is when they did the energy monitoring of these two modern motors, they actually found out the one with the inverter was using more energy when it should be the other way around. They looked into detail and they found out that the setting parameters of the inverter were wrong. And that was the issue. That was why they were using more energy on the with inverter motor. So they were able to fix it and get it right. And there were a lot of other findings that they learned through this IoT installation. Of course, this is only the first step of their smart factory journey. Right now, they're planning to put in more sensors uh, to f gather more data on the factory floor. Also, they're planning to expand automation. And this is one good thing about the Mitsubishi Electric e-factory solution is that it is very flexible. So it's easy to expand the system when you want to um, raise the number of data points that you are gathering. Also, as the Sendai plant was a big success, they're planning to install the same similar systems into the other plants. And they're going to, to go to the goal of connecting all the plants and sharing the data, their successes, and combining the data company-wide. So I think it's a really good story about Hayama Chemicals while they're, you know, they're saving their strength 
and being close to the customer while becoming more efficient as a total whole. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you very much and see you again.